All right, all right, we're on the air. Okay, let's give it a few minutes so I can check the health of the stream, and then we'll get started. pretty good. I'm going to get started now. I'm just going to check. See if I can see comments. I don't want to miss any comments. Let's make sure we don't miss any comments. go comments are up or chat I should say live chat all right so probably edit this out because it's kind of sucky the beginning but anyway um welcome to my first live stream do I DIY live stream um, I've done a couple of other live streams in the past but I've kind of just dumped them uh, just because I kind of think nobody cares but statistics seem to show they do but anyway it doesn't matter um, so today we're going to, we go, we're going to be, all right, let's start again. <laughs> today we're going to be creating our own, um, premium speaker cables. Um, there are a lot of really, uh, ultra premium speaker cables out there with a lot of snake oil science and all that garbage. Um, I'm not going to model mine after that. I'm going to model mine after a reputable speaker company, but still I feel like it's a little bit too much, uh, for some folks. So this should be a very cheap alternative without sacrificing on quality. Um, and that speaker cable will be this one right here. This is Blue Jeans cable. Um, and let's see here. Let's make sure I don't get the stats wrong. Okay, so this is a, uh, I bought this uh, probably a year ago. So I checked the prices recently um, and it's about $53 for 15 feet. Um, I custom made the length, so this isn't exactly that length, but um, $53 roughly for 15 feet. Um, this is their 14 gauge four wire cable. Uh, they use Canaire's uh, 4S11 star quad cable to make it. Uh, obviously, they don't make their own cable. Uh, they just manufacture the end product, which is the cable, the banana plugs. They just put it together, I guess. They just, anyway. Um, so if we look at some of the breakdown here so here's a quick cost breakdown um for so 15 feet 14 gauge four wire so there's actually two wires if you can see that two wires per per plug um cost about 53 dollars um so blue jeans cable allows you to source the parts from them so you can actually buy this cable and these banana plugs um, and build it yourself. If you were to do that, the raw cable, 15 feet of it, would be 22.95 as of a week ago when I compiled this. And to get the WT, WBT style uh, clone plugs, these aren't WBT. These are these are clone plugs that they use. They're locking speak, uh, banana plugs, so you twist them and then they ex the tips expand and they sort of uh, ex lock into place by expanding and not allowing you to pull the pull it out of the post. Um, anyway, uh, so those are fourteen fifty. So again, twenty two ninety five for the raw cable, fourteen fifty for the the clone banana plugs, 
and that'll save you some money. It'll be about $37.45. None of this is including tax and shipping and any of that stuff. This is just, you know, make the math simple, right? Um, so that'll save you about $15.55. So that's 29% uh, percent saving. So you could save some money doing it that way. Um, I am going to do it our own way. We're going to use Media Bridge's 14 gauge four wire speaker cable. And that costs uh, that uh, the same size, 15 foot cable would cost you about four. Uh, sorry, seven dollars and ninety-five cents for the raw cable. Um, and here, here's here's my cable. Um, and it would be about seven dollars and nineteen cents for the banana plugs uh, if you use these uh, GSL, GLS. Sorry, I'm dyslexic. GLS audio. Uh, banana plugs. I don't know if you can see that very, very well. Um, you can source those on Amazon, both of them, uh, for a total saving of, uh, for not a total savings, for a total cost of $15.14. So again, buy the 15 foot cable from Blue Jeans, it'll be $53 uh, as of the time I checked about a week ago. Um, uh, source the parts from them, but build it yourself, $37.45. Source the parts from Amazon and build it yourself. $15.14 for a $37.86 uh, savings, which is roughly 71%. Um, so yeah, uh, and that, and if you want to compare like us building it uh, via Amazon versus, uh, you know, us building it or you're, you building it uh, via sourcing parts from Blue Jean Cable, it's still cheaper. It's still a savings of $22.31 uh, for total savings of 60% off of having to build it uh, using their parts. So either way, it's a good win. Uh, so that's my spiel. I don't want to ramble because I tend to ramble. Uh, so, so again, $53 for buying it straight from Blue Jeans. $15.14 if you just build it ourselves. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, okay, so here's the cable. I pre-cut it. Um, in this particular build, it won't be 15 feet. Uh, I'm building this because I'm actually going to use this in my home theater setup, uh, replacing some old cable that finally broke. Um, and so I pre-cut it for the right size. This will be for my left speaker channel. I'm just going to fling this across the table. Okay. And I'm just going to pre-place this here so it's out of the way. And I'm going to go over all the parts I'm going to use, okay? Um, so first and foremost, I'm not going to use these guys. So I have used um, GLS Audio banana plugs in the past with great success. Um, so I actually bought a set for this video or for this live stream and I wanted to do a dry run with one speaker cable and I went through the entire set of eight leaving just two behind because they were all defective so I was saddened to see that we ha I had a defective set of cables which I've never had problems with them in the past uh, so instead I'm using some alternative uh, locking banana cables and I'll probably link to the description this is a last minute change these are kind of cool they uh get it to focus. I can't seem to get it to focus. Um, let's see if we get this guy to focus. Is that better? All right, so they're also locking. You spin to expand the tip. But they have this really cool looking um, carbon fiber, like, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, carbon fiber look and feel to it. So. We're going to use these instead. Uh, and they're, I think, only slightly more. So I think this will increase our build costs probably 2 or $3, not much. Again, so $15 may go up to $18. Not that big a deal, actually, uh, in comparison. Uh, but I'll, I'll put the final numbers in the description when we're done. Okay, so those will be the banana plugs we use. Uh, I'm only showing these because I know there are a lot of people who... Um, are big fans of theirs and maybe I just got a bad batch and I don't want to sort of fault them for one bad batch but I don't know like six out of eight not not good but you know I don't want to people to accuse me of like 
false advertising or anything. So uh, in any event, uh, we're going to use some shrink wrap. Uh, and I'll explain what, why we're using it and where. Um, and this is just additional stuff. This is not going to be included in the, uh, the price of like 15 bucks. Uh, I'm just, the 15 bucks just gets you to look, gets you to look as close as possible to these guys. These are really plain. I'm going to take it a step further by wrapping these guys, uh, making them a little bit fancier than what the blue jean cable looks like. So I think my build will be a little bit more premium looking. Um, and so I'm going to use these to help achieve that as well as some tech flex, which is basically a wrapping. Um, the blue jeans cable is just the naked cable, which is the skin of it is, uh, it's just like this sort of black shiny, um, uh, color. Um, the native skin of the media bridge cable is white, kind of, kind of ugly, honestly. So I'm going to basically wrap it in this nice, um, looking red and black uh, Techflex cable. So again, to make it a little bit more premium, again, not included. If you want to do a sort of, you know, like point to point uh, exact build to the blue jeans, you can, uh, you know, it'll be about 15 bucks, 15, 18 bucks, depending on which banana plugs are used. Uh, I'm going to take it a step further because why not, right? Um, but again, you can skip this step. So that's my point of this. Uh, but I'm going to, I want mine to look a little nicer, so. Uh, so I'm just saying the $15 is like the bare minimum it will cost to sort of build something like that. I'm just going to clip that on there so I don't lose it. Um, and some more tight weave. Uh, so tight weave is like Tech Flex. It's just a little bit of a tighter weave. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use this as a sample, but I'm going to use that to cover these. So unlike the blue jeans cable, which is basically uh, like an a uh, lightish pink and white and a dark pink and a sort of uh, hot pink. Uh, so the white cable and light pink cable on one end and the red and hot pink cable on the other. The media bridge cable is white and black, green and yellow, not as pretty I, in my opinion. So I'm actually gonna wrap that in some tight weave uh, and uh, make it a little make it look a little nicer um, all right so in any event that's for this part of it to hide that all right so I'm gonna give you guys some pros and cons at the end of the, the video as to why we're doing this and I'm also gonna get on my soapbox and complain about all the snake oil uh, speaker cable companies out there and why you shouldn't fall prey to, to, to their marketing uh, but I'll save that for the end since I've already taken a long time starting this intro. So, um, first things first, I think I'm just going to do the most painful part first, which I did last when, when I did my dry run and I hated it. And I think, sorry about that, I think everyone hates this part, uh, which is to wrap this cable in the Techflex just because it's such a pain in the butt. Um, and I'd just rather get that out of the way, to be perfectly honest. So basically, the way this works, it's kind of like, it's kind of interesting. TechFlex is, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of like those little, um, little toys that you used to play with as a kid where you put your fingers in, put your fingers in it, and it, if you pull really quickly, it sort of locks your fingers in place, and if you push them together, it expands. Same thing sort of happens here. Let's see if I can do it justice, but if you do that, it sort of expands. So the reason why this is such a pain in the ass to um, to snake through is that you have to kind of push it through, and then you gotta flex it, bring it out, push it through to flex, and then bring this out this way. And so stretch, 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 stretch all the way through, and it takes forever. So I'm just gonna do that now, just get that out of the way. And actually, I can give you my soapbox spiel while I'm doing this, since this is a live stream. Okay, so. Um, let's see, actually, I'll, I won't start with the silver box, I'll just give you some of the pros as, uh, for why I'm actually building my own speaker cable, so, um, and, and the cons, and the pros and cons for buying it from Blue Jean. Listen, if you're not handy, and you just find this entertaining, by all means, watch, um, it's not for everyone, but, um, 
But if you do want to save some money without sacrificing quality, uh, then it's a good idea to just build it yourself. Um, so the pros to basically buying it from someone like a reputable company like Blue Jeans Cable is, you know, it's a heavy duty cable manufactured by a quality company. Um, the cons are, at least for this particular cable that I bought, um, it's not UL listed or ETL listed um, or NEC rated. Um, it's, in my opinion, unnecessarily expensive. Um, it's like a 30%, almost 30% markup if you sourcing the parts from them. And you know they're, even if you source the, source the parts from them, they're making a profit off of that. So it's definitely a lot more than 30% in my my opinion. Um, so you're paying a premium for, this, for, the, you know, for the Canary name, which is important. It is a quality company, but you are paying a premium. And the premium is being paid in the fact that, you know, you're potentially paying a middleman um, because Canary generally doesn't sell direct, but maybe on off chance Blue Jeans Cable actually has a deal with them to, uh, to sell direct. Don't know. Kind of doubt it. Um, and let's see what else. Um, cut this out, right there. And you're also basically paying, you know, whatever markup Blue Jeans is putting on the cable, right? So you're paying, the, paying for the middleman's markup to buy from whoever Canary is buying from, and then you're also paying whatever markup Blue Jean Cable is putting on the putting on it so they can make a profit because frankly it's a business and they need to make money right um so while we're on the subject of cons i'm going to digress to dispel a few sort of pseudosciencey sort of uh bull uh so scientific testing has shown that basically run-of-the-mill oxygen-free cable copper cable is basically of, of the same make and gauge performs just as well as those uh, you know, ultra premium snake oil leak cables that you can get out there. Um, so what do I mean by that? Um, when comparing a straight cable, um, like this, uh, no twists, no braiding, uh, actually this has slight twists, so, but when comparing a straight cable, um, of the same length, the same gauge, uh, the same type, meaning oxygen be copper, not copper or clad aluminum, um, let's see, uh, So to double check on how um, where where I am. Oh, I think a little bit more. I need to shift a little bit more. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if these look about the same. I always cut a lot of extra, by the way, way extra, just because you know better to cut more and you know better to cut a larger length than you need than and cut, you know cut away the extra than to have to redo it because you cut it too short. Um, so anyway, uh, when comparing them of the same making type or whatever, um, there's really no material performance difference between the two cables. In fact, there have been instances in which premium cable companies underperform when compared to generic cable. Um, and that, that, you know, that's pretty interesting. There's some, you can Google it, you'll find, uh, some like actual science because someone actually took measurements. Um, Anyway, this season to suspect that, you know, those snake oily pseudoscience guys, they sort of uh, aren't being honest either with their advertising, the build quality or the gauge of their cable or something, because technically speaking, if they're the same gauge, length, and type, they should measure the same. Anyway, so what's so special about braided cable or twisted cable? This is slightly twisted. I'm um, not sure if you can kind of see the twist in it. It's kind of light twist you can see it in the sheathing uh, when I cut it away you may be able to see it a little bit better um, anyway what's so special about twisted or braided cable is that scientifically speaking you know they've been able to measure and it has been shown to sort of reduce electromagnetic interference and inductance and inductance is of all the things is one of the things that affects the sound uh, different frequencies uh, uh, can affect uh, the sound at certain frequencies differently um, but in any event, uh, it's, it's, it's been shown to reduce inductance and um, electromagnetic interference. But, you know, while these are measurable data points, they may not be material in your circumstances. I mean, you'd have to be building, you'd have to be running this wire maybe somewhere where there's a lot of high voltage or near power source where that electromagnetic interference can, ha can have a, an effect 
But if you're not doing any of that, then honestly, it's not really gonna make a difference. Uh, I'm almost there. Uh, off by a little bit. This is why I need to pull this up a little bit more. Okay, maybe that much, I think. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Oh, what a pain. And man, let me tell you, this chaffs your hands. Um, all right, so I think that's it. I think we're good. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that is all the details. Oh, and so uh, what is uh, the pros for mine? Uh, just so you know, my cable, not my personal cable, but the Media Bridge cable I bought from Amazon costs about uh, 53 cents per foot, while the uh, Blue Jeans cable sourced uh, Canair cable cost a dollar fifty three if you buy it from them so it's literally almost three times as much um, so mine is 53 cents that's a pro it's, it's really a good build quality um, it is ETL listed and CL2 rated so technically you can take this cable and put it behind the wall because it's fire rated uh, to be behind to be to, to, to be built to be put behind walls um, and admittedly, when I'm done, it'll look more premium. So <laughs> that is the pro for me. The con, honestly, is you can already see how much time I spent sort of running this through the TechFlex. So it's time consuming to build, though you can, like I said, skip this step if you want to be um, like exactly compatible with the, you know, like if you want to be like point to point compatible with the Canair, they don't wrap their stuff in TechFlex. So you can actually skip that and save some time, but it is time consuming to build your own cable. Uh, you need to be somewhat handy. You see I have a lot of equipment here. You don't need to OD it like I did overdose on like all the equipment I have here. I just am kind of a nerd and I have all these things. So, you know, you can actually get away with a lot of simpler setup. I'm gonna, for example, tin the end of these wires. You don't need to do that. You know, these are screw in. You can, as long as you cut the ends, and screw it in and get a good seal. You don't need to tin them, but I'm gonna tin them just because I'm that guy that does that. Um, and you do need some tools, so that's the other con. In any event, I'm going to switch back to the chat so I don't miss anyone's questions. And I'm going to pick up. Sorry. Drop something. I'm going to pick this thing up. All right, let's get started. So, TechFlex is in. I have a pretty large um, overlap here. So I have enough. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. Um, let's see my mat here. Check the health. Make sure. Check the health of the stream real quickly. Uh, still going. Awesome. All right. So anyway, um, I'm gonna cut this down. My little silicon mat here actually has a little built-in ruler. So in centimeters I think I'm gonna keep about I don't know how much overlap do I want maybe about this much for flexibility maybe this much so basically what I'm gonna do is cut and strip cut a little short and strip strip the pieces and leave this that I'm gonna wrap up in some more tech flex um, and I'm trying to figure out how much I want to be exposed. I think about maybe that much. So let's cut it here. Let me get rid of this. Woo. All right. Not sure what happened here. Should put my shrink wrap on ahead of time. So let's see here. I think the three eighths inch is the right size. Let's take a quick look. Make sure it's the right size. It looks to be about the right size. This is gonna be fun. 
actually I'll do that again so you guys can see. The fun part is uh, the tech flex tends to fray uh, when you cut it. And so getting this thing over that frayed end is going to be really fun. So sometimes you can do things like take a piece of tape, which in this case I don't think will work. But take a piece of tape and I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. The tape is pretty thick. I need thinner tape. Let's see if I can slide that over that frayed end. Let's see if this works. It will be either fantastic or another disaster. Uh, it's not going to work. All right. So let's take that off. I keep this here for other reasons. I always keep some gaffer's tape available because it's so handy. You never know when you need a piece of gaffer's tape. Uh, let's see here. Let's try to get this over. I could make it a bigger piece. This does shrink allegedly three to one, but I really like to make these as tight as possible. So what I should have done, honestly, is as I was snaking this through, put a piece of this over here first and then snake it through so it wouldn't be last minute trying to see what the other end looks like. That's just as bad. I'm trying to get this on. So we shall see. Let's just go for the bigger one. Half inch. And since we're going to use the half inch one, we need to cut this. You know what? I knew I forgot something, and it was the scissors. I'm sorry. I'm going to take a quick step, step out really quickly and just grab some scissors. Apologize for that. Actually, find my scissors, so I'm gonna use exacto knife. Well, not an exacto knife, but um, whatever this is, uh, box cutter. There we go. other half on because I need one of these for each end. This is sort of a fit and finish thing. You know, it all makes sense at the end while I'm doing this. Kind of twist it as I go on because you see it starts to sort of flex it doesn't want to go through. Alright, there we go. Alright, put this push it down a little bit further. All right, so we have the heat shrink tube. Uh, and that's essentially, I'll show you again on the uh, veneer, but it's basically this black piece right here. It shrinks, covers the wires really nicely, good fit and finish, you don't, so it doesn't look crappy basically. Um, so we need two of those, one on each end. 
All right, what else do we want to do here? We need to open this up, so let's open it up. I'm gonna basically take the outer sheathing off now. Okay, so I want to show you something. Uh, a lot of these speaker cable, speaker wire, uh, come with this little thread right here. Um, and this little thread is really nice to have if you're going to strip away a large section of the sheathing. Um, you can use it to basically pull and rip um, the sheathing in half and then you can easily pull this away. Uh, if you, so again, you don't really need to have all these fancy tools. You can just kind of cut away. You may damage these, but it doesn't matter. Just cut with a knife, exacto knife, anything just to get to the string and then use the string to pull away. Um, and it gives you a nice easy way to sort of remove the sheathing without having to have all these fancy tools. I just happen to have them. Um, all right, so I'm going to get rid of all the sheathing up until about where the tech flex is. It's going to expose all that wire. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. Actually, should I use a string to show you guys? I probably should. Let's see how this hard part is just getting a good grip on, on it when it's really small. Let's see. My hands are really slippery right now. Let's see if I can wrap this around. Yeah, I'm not. I wish I had pliers on me right now, and I don't actually have the money to pull this away. I think I need to cut more away in order to get that. Uh, be effective. I'm going to do it the somewhat painful way a little bit just so you guys can see. So I'm sorry if it slows down the build a little bit, but reality is not everyone's going to have tools. So maybe showing a little bit the harder way. I'm going to bite down. Oh. Just pull on that guy. Do it tool that God gave us, a teeth. You can see that, but I basically hold it on this string. My teeth. I don't suggest you do that. Maybe use pliers or something, but whatever. Okay, now you can kind of see a little bit of how that works. Uh, see? All right. Anyway, now I'm going to use some tools to speed this along, so don't waste your time. All right, as I'm pulling this away, you can kind of see that they're sort of twisted. You see, it's, there's a slight twist in this. I wouldn't say this is like a super twisty. It just has a nice slight twist to it. Um, and again, can reduce electromagnetic interference and reduce inductance, um, which is nice. Um, and so, that's kind of why I picked up this brand of cable. It has a little bit of twisting built into it, which is nice. Um, you don't have to, you, especially if your speaker runs are going to be pretty short. Um, and there isn't a lot of like things that can interfere with the, the signal path of the cable in, via like electromagnetic interference or anything like that. Um, you don't need to, so you can actually save even more money on the cable because I do believe the mono price cable, they do sell a four gauge, four wire cable and that's even cheaper than the media bridge cable so you can save even more money on it and mono price has been touted by numerous sites as being a high quality speaker cable you can check audioholics uh, i think even if i'm not mistaken if you check uh, the wire cutter which is a awesome tech review site it's probably akin to like a consumer reports but you don't need a subscription to to read their content which is awesome um, in any event, so here's our exposed cable. So what I like to do is I like to separate the white and black and I slightly twist them just for aesthetics. And also because 
Yeah, mostly aesthetics. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, so I put a nice slight twist on it. Makes it look a little bit nicer. I take the red and green and I do the same. Sorry. Not, not always sure what what's, what what's, what you guys can see if I'm in frame or not. I apologize. As I do more of these, I'll get more comfortable, less nervous, and it'll be a little bit better quality, hopefully. And we'll move a little quicker. All right, so there we go. There's one end. There's the other end. Okay. So... That's one end, it twisted, this is great. Let's put some sheathing on this as well. Actually, I don't want it that long. So I want to cut this a little bit more. I'm trying to figure out my mind's eye, how much of this do I want exposed. Think about that much. I'm gonna cut this down some more. All right. And we're gonna put on these tips. Now, I bought different sizes. I'm gonna see which one works. This, this is the uh, 3 16th or 4.5 according to the packaging, which technically I don't think is accurate. I think it's uh, 4.5 millimeters, it's not 3 16th. I think it's like 4.6 or 4.7, but whatever. Let's see if we can get... Actually, you know what, we'll cut this in half. Cut this in half, and we use half for each side. I'm gonna make sure they're the right, the right length. I want it to be symmetric. I tend to whisper because I don't, I'm not used to talking to myself. Because effectively, that's what I'm doing. Because I don't know who's watching. Maybe no one. So I might be effectively talking to myself. And so I tend to whisper. All right, that's. In half, let's measure these up, make sure. Yep, that's effectively the same length. All right, let's do the same for the red. I'm gonna take this sh shrink. So this is from the same company that makes TechFlex, but you don't have to buy if you wanna go beyond again. We're going to beyond the 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 recommended uh, or the, the equivalent build quality of the Canair cable from Blue Jean. We're just going to make ours look a little nicer. Is this the same size? Roughly the same size. Okay. Um, so we need a set for one end and a set for the other end. And if you guys have questions, feel free to just, assuming the chat's actually working on my iPad. I guess I should look back every few minutes just to make sure. Let me just see something. Okay, it's, it's up. Um, I'm going to trust my iPad. I will look back periodically to make sure because it did freeze before. So I'm not sure how much I trust it. All right, so red and green will be for the red terminal. We'll put this shrink, oh, it's, it's a tight fit, so I'm hoping it goes all the way and not get stuck. Hey, it's working, okay. Awesome, perfect, you can see that. That. Yep, okay, and then we'll do it to the back. Ooh, the black's a little tight. The black is a little tight. Actually, this is not what I wanted to do. It actually works out really nicely, but that's not what I was trying to do. What I was going to do was I was going to put this tighter TechFlex over it like so and I'll show you what actually you know what if anyone's watching I'll let you guys decide what to do what I should do you tell me what you want to see here 
which which one looks a little nicer. So I was gonna do this. Actually, let me pin this. Put this over my lap. I'm gonna switch sides on this cable. Okay. That way, I don't take it out of frame every time I'm doing something. All right. So my idea originally was to, well, I'm gonna show you what I did. So this is the red and black TechFlex with the black TechFlex. What I was gonna do is put the colored uh, part, this, this piece, this uh, colored shrink tubing at the very end by the speaker plug to signify like a small piece, maybe about that big signify to help signify that this is red versus a black because this little line here is really faint but it would have been nice to have like mostly black with like a little piece of red sticking out at the tip so it'd be like an inch of red then the rest of the black tech flex so what do you think since i actually have enough red to cover the whole thing should i just do that and then put the end on like that or should i use this nice black tech flex and put a little red over this black tech flex um, at the very tip, just to sort of um, accentuate the red end of the terminal. You tell me what you think. I'll give it a few minutes. If anybody's watching, just type in the chat. In the meanwhile, in the, in the interim, I'm going to actually cut this to size so I know how much I need. Chiming in, so I'm gonna go with my original gut because I think it might make it look a little more premium. So, in the end, this would just for illustrative purposes, this will come over here like that, it'll shrink over really tightly. Then this black back flex will show, and then there'll be a small piece of red on one end and a small piece of black on the other end to help uh, accentuate the, the terminals, positive and negative. I don't know. I kind of like this red, which is stiffer. Because shrink, shrink wrap tends to get really stiff when it shrinks, and that's a, the reason why I didn't want to actually... Ah, oh, crap, I shouldn't have done that. The reason why I didn't actually want to use shrink wrap all the way on the ends. Yeah, I'm going to pull the shrink wrap off. Because I know it's going to get stiff, and it's going to make it really hard to bend, and if you have a really tight, like I do, the speaker's really close to the wall, I want I need a little bit of give there. So, yeah, I'm going to go with this instead. All right, let's cut another piece of black. Did I drop it? Yes, I did. There we go. So let's... Get this in here. Accordion, accordion. It's already fraying. You can see how it frays right there. It's another reason why you want to have the shrink wrap on the ends. Just sort of hide some of that. There we go. Now I'll clean that up a little bit with this guy. Clean up these ends. Lefty, I'm sorry. I should have put the camera on the other end, in hindsight. Because my being lefty is going to wind up blocking a lot of what you see. bit neater again the, the the piece that binds these two together will make it look a lot neater and I'm actually gonna do that now because why the hell not 
and get to see what that looks like. All right, so this is what you'll see when we're done. And since this is actually a, with, with the actual TechFlex or TightFlex in this case, I think they call this one TightFlex is that the weaving is a little tighter um, on it. I'm going to have to go with the quarter inch. shrink tubing because it needs to fit over the tech flex now which is now a little too close for comfort if I want to put this weaving over it this is gonna be really fun so I'm gonna do a quick dry run to make sure I can actually get it in there yep I can cool all right so let's figure out what length we want to cut from here I figure I don't know like Three centimeters, maybe? Looks like the right size. Four centimeters. Let's do four centimeters. Why the hell not? Four centimeters. All right. We need two. One for the black, one for the red. Make sure they're the same size. This because I'm a perfectionist. There we go. And let's get some red. Again, feel free to ask any questions, comments, constructive criticism. Literally my first time doing this live which makes me nervous which makes me make mistakes like I realized I didn't plug in my I'm thinking about this while I'm doing this but I realized I didn't plug in my uh, my soldering iron or my heat gun so now I'm gonna have to run out for a second which is not a good thing to do during a live stream make sure these are the same size roughly a little bit all right that's good enough so yeah I gotta take this guy and plug it in and I gotta take this guy and plug it in uh, it should only be 30 seconds I'm so sorry that I have to keep getting up ill prepared ill prepared you get an F you get an F for being ill prepared Putting things in the wrong bags. I'll sort that out later. Ill prepared. Come on, Zexon, you should know better. Garbage. All right, uh, the plugs right here should just be like 30 seconds each, maybe. Everything's plugged in. Let's see. There we go. Hope I don't blow a fuse. 
that'll be fun. I have the AC running in here. That's that background noise. Hopefully that's not too loud. Uh, it's not too loud in the stream. And soldering iron. Go! Sweet. All right, so first things first, I'm going to seal these up now. Just because uh, there's no reason not to. That looks like right about right. So this will either go horribly wrong or wonderfully right. Um, Tack flex can melt. So if you spend too much time near the edges here, you might actually melt the teplex. So kind of just run it up and down really quickly. Get it to heat up. Don't spend too much time on one spot. You start to see it shrink. There we go. Now I'm trying to see it. Turn around. There we go. So this shrink tubing I'm using right here, again, super inexpensive shrink tubing. It has a bit of glue inside, so you'll see it ooze out. It's not that the tech product is melting. Anything it sort of touches as it heats up will release the glue and it'll ooze out a little bit towards the end. You'll know when tech product melts because it starts to snap. You'll see these little, little things snapping. I just realized the heat, heat gun is right by the mic. Maybe not the smartest thing. Alright, anyway. Sorry, I'm not sure if you heard all that, but what I was saying is uh, the tech flesh can melt if you um, overheat it. It has a pretty low melting point. Um, I think it's like 120 or something like that. Um, and the some of these shrink tubings have glue inside to help form a nice tight bond, and sometimes that oozes out. So if you see like See, look, see, if it looks like it's like melted plastic, it's not just a clear glue. You can touch it and feel uh, it's clear. Um, it's TechFlex glue. I mean, the shrink wrap glue. All right. I don't know if you can see that. That's a nice bond. I could probably get a little tighter. This is three, three to one shrink tubing, but I'm a little paranoid about um, melting the TechFlex. So. I'm gonna leave it like that. So that end is done. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna strip some of the end of this. Um, we're going to put on these uh, banana plugs. And then we're gonna, that's pretty much the end of it. There's a few steps, smaller steps in between, but that's that's pretty much it. We're gonna put the um, this nice color-coded tubing over it, red and black. But anyway, so let's get to that. So let's put these on first. So this should be the black. So here's like the number one sort of newbie mistake that people make when they're doing this, that they forget to put these things on first, and then they realize after they've done certain steps and then they have to undo them. Um, and so you want this on first. Just don't fall into that trapping. All right, and this is gonna be a pain. Wedge this there. That's a little bit better. You can do it. Come on, TechFlex. I mean, shrink tubing. TechFlex behave. I'm already starting to whisper again because that is my default mode. I like things to be super tight, so I always tend to get things to be. Could have gone a slightly bigger size, but no. Even though it's three to one shrinkage, get your head out of the gutter. Um, it'll work. 
I just don't trust it. I like things to be a really good tight fit. There we go. So push it a little bit further back than you want it to be. Now, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm just sort of like squeezing the tip. There we go. That seems much better. All right. Push this a little bit in. Pull those back when we're near near completion. All right, so let's cut some of this away. All right, here's a key. I'm going to try to pull some of this tech flex back down since it does collapse and trap it with this uh, shrink tubing so I can expose some of this wire so that I can strip it, put the tippets on and move on. So basically do like that. Actually do I need to? Can I just do this? This is the last bit addition. I didn't do this in my uh, dry run. So I'm kind of debating on how to best proceed. Here, and I think I'm just gonna just tape this down because why the hell not? I got the tape. Pull this tape, uh, pull this down, tape it. Place. All right, so how much do we want to strip? I'm going to take this off. And this is another thing, by the way. The barrel has to go on before you put this on, or you will hate yourself. I promise you. Just going to measure right now how much I need to strip. Strip away. Always the screwdriver that you don't need that comes out. Not the one you do need. Here we go. So let me show you these banana plugs. They have two screws. One here, one there. This one you should, you can just strip the entire wire and just screw, screw in and make contact with the bare wire with both screws. I don't recommend that honestly, because after a while, after giving and flexing for a bit, the wires will break and then you're just gonna have to re redo it. I usually just keep enough of the sheathing of the wire on so that I can screw straight into the sheathing to give me a tighter fit. And then from this point forward, I leave bare wire. So I'm gonna do that. I need to measure though to see how much I have to, to take out. And there's a little plastic tubing here. I'm gonna unscrew this so you can see. There's a little plastic tubing in here, and I need to take that out. I think that's just so the screws don't fall out. Well, that's fun. Come on, tube! There we go. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Alright, let's put this in. Oh, just enough wire. That was literally where the tape falls. Perfect. Alright, so I know I have a pen. I'm going to mark the wire. So this is where the end of the barrel is. So now for comparison, you can see how far it goes. And I know now based on that, that I need to strip up from here. Let me mark that more clearly and then I'll show it to you. Can you see that? 
can't tell if you can see that black wire but it lines up of course the camera does not want to focus it lines up with here so I know from here out I'll strip and from here down I leave behind so that I have good contact with that bottom screw so here's my wire stripper 14 gauge wire don't use a 14 gauge don't trust it always go one gauge bigger wider uh, so I'm gonna go to 10 and I'm gonna basically go to 10 and I'm gonna lightly squeeze and rock like this rotate 90 degrees lightly squeeze and rock rotate back 90 degrees lightly squeeze and rock and see if I can pull that off nope okay so we will try 12 then sorry I should have done 12 not 10 one gauge uh, shift should have gone from uh, this is 14 gauge wire should have went to 12 sorry about that lightly squeeze and rock rotate lightly squeeze and rock and you should be able to I go now I go to 10 and I pull that what I found if you go exactly with the right gauge of the wire oftentimes you'll strip it and you'll wind up with extra like broken pieces of copper which you don't want it's happened way too many times and then I have this thing cut way too too perfect I would have to bring this down bring that down I don't want to deal with it so let me see here let's do it for this one so we'll go to 12 let me line it up so they're the same lightly twist go 90 degrees 12 twist even though it's 14 gauge and just so you guys know, if you don't know, um, the smaller the gauge, the thicker the wire. So 12 is better than 14. 10 is better than 12. So. Uh, or thicker. I don't know. Better is the better. Speaker to parlance is probably better. All right. All right, here we go. So they're roughly the same. Let's do it again. Make sure everything looks good. Perfect. All right. Let's see. All right. So I'm going to release some of this tape, and I'm going to cut the extra tight flex, which is the smaller tech flex, to the right size. And this tape is a little bit gooier than I was expecting. A little bit tackier. I hope. Oh, come on. What I really wanted was painter's tape. Cause it, it's tacky enough, but doesn't like. It's not super tacky. You definitely don't want uh, duct tape for this. It leaves too much residue behind. All right. Put you back over here. Let's cut some of you away. How much do we want to cut away? I say we want to cut about here. Just be careful not to cut the copper wire. That would be unfortunate if you did. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to twist these a little bit. Make my life a little bit easier. All right. Use my little, you can use little scissors for this. You don't need one of these fancy wire trimming tools. Go down a little bit further.
Alright, almost done. Alright. You can see that. Just barely enough. Alright. So, again, super important. Make sure you put the barrel over first, just like we did with the shrink tubing, because you will regret it. You will regret it. Make sure I don't accidentally stir some of these wires. I'm going to twist these two together, because that's what I'm going to wind up doing before I tin them. Okay. Make sure you go. Threads are up, because the threads have to catch. Well, I already unscrewed these with threads. That's a caption. You have the thread part of the barrel is up. Let's put this over. Of course, TechFlex wants to be a pain in the butt because it wants to expand as I'm pushing down, which is not what I want to happen. Come on. Am I going to have to use tape again? Am I going to have to use tape again? Tape is your friend. Tape is absolutely your friend. All right, so now you see why I have this tape here. Ta-da! All right, let's take the tape off. It's tech flexes. The end of the tech flex are getting in the way. All right. Okay. So the barrel is on. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to figure out, before I tin this, do a dry fit on how much, there we go, there we go, right about there, how much more of this I have to cut away, I think I need to cut a little bit more further down. Again, to be to be to be honest and fair, like I'm going above me on what the blue jeans cables did. You don't have to do it. You can skip all these steps because I know this may seem like, well, this is a lot of time. It is, but again, I'm one of those guys that likes to make things super pretty, super nice, and attractive looking, neat, high quality looking. So I'm gonna do it. But you don't need this piece. You literally take this piece, put it over the bare wire, the bare white wire without this tech flex piece on it, just so that you bind these two cables together to make them look nicer. You put the banana plug on, you're done. It, it's not gonna take as long as this. This is just going the extra mile to make it look extra nice. Um, let's see how much more do I need. Okay, I see. Oh, I see. I marked it. I don't, why am I not following the mark? Yeah, use the mark, silly. Use the mark, silly man! we would have been finished already if you just want to do like have parity with the blue jeans cable we're gonna make our cable look nicer I think subjectively but subjective but I think it will look nicer all right there we go so next step is we're gonna tend the ends of this you know this cable we're going to tin the ends just because I am using two different cables and I want them to have good contact with each other. I'm going to tin them together. We're going to take the shrink wrap, bring it up to here, shrink wrap that. We're going to attach the banana plug on the end and then we're done. And we do the same for this guy and then we're done. All right. And I'll stop it there. I won't show you the other end because it's the point it turns and repeat. At that point, you're not going to learn anything new. Um, but you'll get to see what a one finished end looks like. All right, so again, any questions, concerns, comments, criti constructive criticism besides like, be better prepared next time. Stop plugging things in at last minute. 
Oh, because I definitely know I need to do that. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so let's tin this. All right, so I'm going to be careful with these um, alligator plugs if you have something like this. This can actually break the tack flex, so I'm actually going to pin it to the shrink wrapping while I tin them just so I don't damage the tech flex. I'm gonna do it to the black one. I think it'll absorb some of the marks a little bit better. All right, so if you've never tinned speaker cable, this is gonna be fun. All right. And there goes the barrel. Let's put the barrel back on. Oh, that's fun, because I had it. Tech flex is gonna give me trouble again. Nope, it didn't. Woo! Awesome. Trying to avoid um There we go. Come on, spin. There we go. Perfect. I don't know if you can see that. Again, I'm lefty. Damn it, I should reverse this so you guys can see it. Alright, this is gonna suck. Because I'm lefty, but we'll see. We'll see how it works out. Okay. All right, let's turn on the uh, soldering iron. Get some solder, solder. I like to say solder. It might be solder. I don't really care, honestly. <laughs> All right, my only concern here, because I have not used these speaker plugs before, truth be told, is that when I tin these, that it's going to be so thick that this little screw won't go all the way down and I won't be able to get the barrel over it. That's my only concern. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. It'll be unfortunate if it does, because again, I had did my try run was not with these speaker plugs. They were with the G GLS, um, but we'll see. Anyway, it's the only thing that can go wrong, I think, right now. That wasn't tested in the dry run. All right, so tin a little bit. People say you shouldn't do this. We should tin a little bit, depending on who you talk to. Then rinse it off on your sponge to make a nice bright shiny tip I don't know if you can see that that's the cousin there we go and I'm gonna get my tip cleaner out and clean the tip all right now we're good and we're gonna do it again now you normally will apply heat to the thing you want soldered or soldered and then on the other end apply this solder so that it apply so that it um, will apply the solder to the thing itself if you put solder on the tip of your iron and then try to get on there you'll see it doesn't really run very well what I do do is I kind of cheat I put a little bit on and I rub it on both sides and then I do that trick just to get sort of a little bit more surface area a little more contact and also get the heat to transfer a little bit quicker so I will do that I'll do that and I'll do that and then I'll do that sort of like apply the heat thing and then you'll see it it will run really nicely now I don't know how, how well you'll see that from your vantage point you know what, we're gonna we're gonna make this vertical so that the solder runs down so we'll undo this take one of these guys the toiler guys By the way, again, you don't need to solder your tips. This is just me going the extra mile. Just twisting it up like that and applying pressure with the screw is good enough. Okay. this and release this guy too I'm just gonna do it by hand again so the only reason why I'm soldering it is soldering it is because 
I want um, the two connect the two cables have a slightly better connection with each other. All right, here we go. Clean, always clean your tip before you put it back. All right, I don't know if you can see that. Get it to focus. Just a little, just just a little. Doesn't need to be perfect. And again, you can skip this piece, but I just like to be perfectionist. I'm gonna put this on. Just to check, I'm gonna do a dry fit test with the screwdriver over here. Hopefully that screw goes in. If not, we are gonna call it a day because this doesn't go in all the way, we got a problem. Careful not to stab yourself. It's very easy to stab yourself. All right, here we go. I do know I have to put this on. I'm just doing a dry, dry fitting. Make sure that it goes over well. Mm, it's giving me a little trouble, which tells me that I need the screw to be a little tighter. Damn it, just should have taped this down. Tech Flex, why you don't love me? Maybe I should have just went with the shrink wrapping. Color coded shrink wrapping. Because this Tech Flex is just a pain in the butt. There we go. Woo! Alright. So, we're going to loosen this. Loosen this. Pull this out. I'm going to apply the shrink wrapping over up into, I don't know if you can see, but the screw left the mark. Can you see that? Can't really see. I wish I can get it to focus. The screw left the mark. So I don't want to add more girth to this screw so, so it doesn't go down all the way. I'm just going to bring it right up to where the screw left its imprint, but not beyond that. Heat shrink wrap that. And then just apply the... Okay, that's hot. to look pretty. All right, there we go. Let's finish it up. It's opening up the screws all the way so that this fits. Okay. I think this is the flattest end. I think that's the flattest end. We'll find out. Screw, 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 screw. Don't stab yourself. I always do. Oh, 
hopefully that's flat enough. I don't think it is. I suspect it's not. We'll have to keep playing with this a little bit. It's the danger of going with 14 gauge, do 14 gauge wires. Maybe it's worth not tinning it because I think that adds more girth. You know, so, you know, that's the, the risk you run. I could also try flattening it before I tin it, so then I'll have a flat end to... Let's see. Hey, look at that! Can you see that? I get it to focus. Look at that. It's nice. You'll see the contrast more with the red. So we'll do the red next. There we go. Not too shabby, me thinks. Alright, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. You know I hate when people say guys on streams, and I'm, like, doing it myself. Screw. Thread side up. Tape. So we don't fight the frayed end to the tech flex. Ta-da! How much easier was that, huh? Live and learn. Okay, pull this back. Measure. Oh, just gotta open up these screws and remove the plastic tubing that's in there to protect it. So funny story is I'm using this generic screwdriver that actually came with this uh, Teflon so, uh, soldering mat because I was actually using my iFixit kit and I spent a fair amount of money on that kit because why the hell not? I wanted to have a nice kit. I've always had pretty crappy, inexpensive screwdriver sets. So I bought money. I spent money on this guy right here. And as I was going through my dry run, it just literally bent the tip. The tip actually warped. I was so shocked. I went to the next size, up bigger, tip thicker, figured it'd be a little bit stronger. And it also bent that guy. And I was so disappointed. I've and, and, and meanwhile, I'm using this really crappy one that came with this thing, and it's tougher. No problems. So I am going to write them and see if I can get replacement tips. I will pay for it, but it better be stronger than the f first set that I had. Anyway, that's enough of my rant. So if you're watching, I fix it. I'm a little bit disappointed. Or maybe more than a little bit. All right, actually, let me... Why you no work? Go through. I need to see where to go to. Why you give me a hard time? Come on, you can do it. You're not any thicker than the other cable. Looks, uh, is there something in there? No, it's fine. That should just should it just work. La la la, you don't want to go in. Alright, come on. Alright, I'll strip the tip and then twist it. I think that's what I did the last one, right? I wanted to measure. I don't want to go too far. I think it was about that far. Just mark that with the pen so we know how far to go. Which is right here. Let's confirm. Actually, I did it with one end. That's how I did it. There we go. Based on that, I look at where to go with Okay. Now I know how much to strip. Let's start stripping. One gauge bigger. So from twelve to 
14, I go to 12. Quarter turn. Now we go at one bait bigger than that, which is 10, to try to release it a little bit. There we go. Pull it off. There we go. Same with the other. Go to 12, which is one. Actually, just mark it. The pen, so I don't screw this up. It's harder with the black and white because the black without something lighter was harder to mark it. But I can see this one, so 12. Rock, quarter turn, rock, pull it off. There we go. Okay, these guys were, yeah, this is the twist direction I was using. All right, so I'm gonna twist these two together. Slighter twist this time, more flat. Let's learn from our lesson. Alright, let's cut, 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 cut. Let's make it quick, quick, quick. This is going too long. How long is the stream going on? It has been on for an hour and 26 minutes, way too long. Alright, let's, let's, let's rush this through. I get like lacks of days ago. This is kind of therapeutic, so it's like washing dishes for me. I actually don't mind washing dishes. I kind of just like washing dishes. All right, so we're going to cut back to the farther line, which is about there. Yeah, that's about right. So. But uh, I kind of like stuff like this. I can kind of just do it at my own pace, nice and slow. There's probably, definitely people can do this faster than I am, but I've never been a rusher. So, and I just realized I'm not even talking into the mic. Let me turn this guy a little bit. Probably getting all my AC noise and not me. Sorry about that, but anyway, you probably didn't hear half of what I said because I'm starting to talk low again. Um, but yeah, anyway, I find this therapeutic, so if you leave it up to me, I would take two hours just to do this one side, just because I like moving at a slow pace. Um, but more prof more people will be more people will generally be more proficient than I am um, doing stuff like this. So let's see, is that about right? No, a little bit more. That's about right. Okay. Um, so yeah, don't don't judge this. The time of this, the time this stream took to, the time it took me in the stream to build this. I can't find my words. I'm tired. Um, you, you'll probably move a lot faster than I am, especially if you're somewhat inclined with some of these things. And if you're new, you'll probably take just as long as I have. But to be fair, part of what I part of I probably lost about 15 minutes just yapping up front, and in between little things like showing you also takes up time. So there, there we go. Let's see, get it to focus. Um, that's not that's not the line actually. If you see that line, it's actually that line. There's a second line there. So no, I didn't overcut. Um. So, let's measure again for it. You know, as they say, measure twice, cut once, always. It's a good, good philosophy to have. Anyway, double check, barrel up. Yep, yep, yep. Everything's good. Let's turn the soldering iron back on. It goes to sleep. This thing is super fast, by the way. So. Um, not getting paid by Xtronics, but I'm going to say I kind of like this guy. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, and it is... It's already warm. 680 degrees. That's how long it took. 
it has a little counter it counts up so you know exactly you turn the knob to the temperature you want and it will actually count up as it gets there all right same old trick I'm not going to pin it for this expediency sake get some of that on there I should do it over the and I screwed that up I bent one of these wires there we go kind of using my legs as I pin it between my legs and my body there we go ah oh, look at that that worked out perfect Ooh, it's jumping. Okay. Okay, fourteen gauge is really hard to tin. So you really have to apply that tip on there to get it really hot. I probably have to set that thing to like 900 so that it transfers a little bit faster. All right, let's clean this tip. That looks good. All right, let's do a dry run fitting. Make sure it's cooled off enough. Uh, where's my screwdriver? Actually, where's the flattest end? That's a flattest end. Okay. I always like to screw the base first so that I know that it's nice and snug and secure and it's not going to pop off. Don't stab yourself. I always stab myself. But this is a dry fitting. So we just want to make sure the screw will actually go in all the way flush enough so that the barrel can come up. Looks like it's not gonna go flush. Let's rotate a little bit, see if we can find. Of course, I'm left handed, so you're not seeing any of this. I think that'll work. Let's do a quick test of the barrel. And this time we're going to put the, te the tape on so that the stupid tech flex end does not give me a hard time when I try to pull the barrel down again. All right. And it, voila, voila, et voila. It fits. Okay. It was snug enough. All right. So I'm going to undo that. Because why? Why, you ask? Because I have to put the shrink wrap, the red shrink wrap over first. Et voila! Let's do that. Oui, oui, oui. Let's get this tape off. And again, the rule is bring the red shrink wrap up and to the point where you see the screw marks from the bottommost part of this thing. Because you don't want to make it you don't want to put it over it'll make it so thick that it'll be really hard to screw that in and that might cause this to stick out those screws to stick out and if they stick out the barrel will not move smoothly over so in any event so I'm bringing that up right into the screw marks Let's see if you can see that mm, no you really can't I'm bringing it down a little bit the screw marks are right there, so I'm bringing it right up to there. And we're going to heat it up. All right, we're almost done, guys. As much as I hate others saying guys on YouTube videos, I now I see why they do it. It was one of my pet peeves. Good morning, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back, guys. You guys. Guys. You guys, guys. Guys. And I'm doing it too. Don't 
don't burn attack flex don't burn attack flex please don't it'll be so bad all right i think that is it um another thing i should have mentioned is you don't need one of these guys oops you don't need one of these guys this is overkill sorry about that uh most people do with a lighter it's actually more controlled with a lighter because the flame head is so small you can be really close without burning the tech flex um others do it with a little mini butane torch so you know pick your poison if you want to use shrink wrap and don't want to spend money on even though that's relatively expensive i think you can pick them up for about 20 bucks the cheap cheaper ones i think that this one's slightly better in that it's i think 30 dollars or 30 some odd dollars i don't want to start advertising brand names in case I get accused of, uh, of like getting endorsements, I wouldn't mind endorsements. But I'll tell you, that if anyone, if you know me personally, and some of you guys do, because I'm pretty sure some of my friends are watching, you know I'm not the type of guy to be bought. So, so if, if you ever decide to endorse me, know that I will tell it like it is. I, if it sucks, I will tell the world it sucks. All right. Here we go. Et voila! Look at that. Look at that. How nice is this? We're done. We are done. All right, let's compare. Let's do a recap comparison. Finish this off. $53. It is a really great speaker cable. There's no denying. I wouldn't be featuring a snake oil brand speaker cable. They make no claims other than the quality of the build. But it is $53. $15 and change. $18 if you use these plugs. Um, and then a couple of more dollars if you want the red tech flex a couple of dollars for this tech flex and a you know a couple maybe even less than a dollar for some of the shrink tubing so if you want to add five more bucks to make it look a little prettier it's still gonna bring 15 to 20 and 20 is a hell of a lot cheaper than 53 so here's our premium grade speaker cable I think it looks a hell of a lot better it's prettier in my opinion uh, it's got all like a little attention to details like um, tech flex here I wanted some bendability um, shrink tubing makes it a little stiff so I didn't want to shrink tube the whole thing but you know color coded nice banana plugs um, I also wanted to talk about this at the end so I'll do it now let me switch over to some of my uh, I have a, like a another ivory tower rant about uh, speaker plugs so speaker plugs you know do premium speaker plugs really matter um i will i will tell you no and i'll tell you why um so people have measured speaker plugs and the measurements uh so the measurement done on the effects of electrical impedance again which is going to color different frequencies can have an effect on different frequencies um but anyway the measurement of the uh Measurements done on the effects of electrical impedance on a wire, right? On one foot of wire, right? But on a wire versus the banana, versus like generic banana plugs. And I mean like really generic. You can get a pair of mono price, $3 a pair banana plugs. But anyway, let, let, me, let me just read my little spiel here so I don't screw it up. Uh, the measurements done on the effects of the electrical impedance of a wire versus that of banana plugs shows us that there's more impact on the impedance of a one foot long piece of 14 gauge speaker wire, right? One foot long piece of 14 gauge single, not double like these, but one foot long single piece of uh, 14 gauge speaker wire has has more impact on impedance than a cheap pair of $3 banana plugs from Mono Price. And the ones that were measured, the ones that were measured with the Mono Price 21916 Affinity Series, more impedance on the wire, a good piece of wire, you know, oxygen-free copper, 14 gauge, had more impedance, had more effects on impedance than 
the crappiest, and I don't mean crappy because I think Monoprice is a fantastic company, but like an inexpensive pair of uh, banana plugs. So to answer the question, do premium speaker plugs matter? No, no, not at all. Don't spend $255 for a pair, which of which you need two, one for each end, a pair for each end. So roughly, you know, 200, uh, 506, uh, sorry, 500, uh, what did I say it was 255, sorry, $510 just to make one wire, one speaker wire is ridiculous in my opinion. Don't, don't be a fool. Don't, don't buy into this stupid snake oil hype. I don't care if it was made of gold. Because again, even if it was made of gold, there's more impedance in your wire itself even though it's relatively low, then there would be in a cheap pair of banana plugs. So don't believe the hype. Don't spend your money on really expensive banana plugs. So with that said, that's the end of the stream. $53 of 15 foot cable, $15 without the fancy wrap and uh, extra trimmings, roughly 15 bucks, uh, 15, 14, or $18 if you get a little slightly better speaker plugs. Uh, and the only reason why I went slightly better was that the GSL, GLS uh, speaker plugs actually were faulty. And I had way too many faulty in that set, so I switched types. But uh, any generic would do. These are locking. You can go for the amount of price ones I just mentioned. They're only $3. So you'd save even more. It probably brings this bill down to about $11 or $10. So 10 versus 53 literally the same oxygen free copper 14 gauge quad wire save your money that's the end hope you enjoyed it guys if you i see i'm doing it if you liked it and you thought this was interesting useful or fun or if you have any other um constructive criticism to share with me please do i'm very open to try new things i you know i'm learning as i go so in any event um i'm moving this type of content away from my gaming channel so there's Zexon on you have a YouTube Zexon channel which is gaming um, I kind of been mixing tech stuff on that channel reviews unboxings and that sort I'm gonna move that content over to the jack of all tech so if you liked it come back to jack of all tech uh, we'll be doing a lot more DIY stuff unboxings reviews and my review style is I do a three-month review first I do an unboxing you get to see what it looks like I give you my first impressions I'll follow that up with a three month review, a six month review, and maybe even a nine month review, review. And the reason being, I've often bought things that failed after a few months. And all the reviews that I've read when I did my research would rave about this thing and I'd be so disappointed. And it's, it's, it's too common these days where things don't last very long. I want you to know if you go watch one of my reviews that I will follow up and you will know in three, six, and maybe even nine months. I'll, I'll check and you get to see how, how I fared with that item. And it includes things like maybe I needed to get service, and that's okay, things break. But how was the service? You know, were they responsive? Did they do a good job? Did they turn it around quickly? Uh, so that you know what kind of company you're buying from. That'll be the difference between sort of my tech reviews and most. Um, if you like that, stay tuned. More to come. Um, and more sort of scientific measures type things. Uh, my next live video, or maybe recorded depending, will be about... Um, will be a gaming based one but I'll put them in a jack of all tech it'll be about um, reducing your lag input lag so uh, I'm gonna measure a couple of monitors show you what their actual input lag is relative to what the manufacturers claiming it is um, and then we'll we'll see how different things affect input lag um, um, and, and see how and, and so you can judge for yourself if you want to build a really lag free gaming setup if you're a competitive gamer you may want to watch the next uh, next video anyway uh, that is that. Thank you all um, if you're watching um, and stay tuned for more hopefully good stuff. Uh, like, subscribe, and share, please. Um, and uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and share, and definitely leave constructive feedback if you have ideas on how to improve this. $53, $15, maybe $20 with the extra trimmings I put on. Good night.